Linda, my wife of 10 years, was waiting for me when I got home from work on Wednesday evening. She asked me to sit down at the table because we needed to talk. Oh, that was the start of many bad talks. From what I had read, she then went on to say that she was sure that I knew she loved me and that she would never do anything to damage our marriage. This did not sound good, so I looked at her and said, but. She took a deep breath. I knew this was going to be bad. Like I said, I love you and want to grow old with you, but I have decided that I want to take a lover. I hadn't seen that coming, and to put it mildly, I didn't like it at all. So let me get this straight. You love me. You don't want to damage our relationship, but you want somebody else? I asked. That is putting it rather crudely. I have met someone that I want to have sex with. It would just be an occasional thing, and I will always be upfront with you about this. I know that I love you enough for this to happen without interfering with how I feel about you, Linda said with a smile. Well, I don't understand why you think you need to do this, and I can't imagine how you could even say that it would not affect us. Have you and your lover already made plans? I inquired. We are tentatively planning on going away for the weekend next weekend, she updated with confidence. I have a question for you, and please try to be truthful. How would you react if I made such a proposal to you? I asked, already anticipating her response. I could see the wheels turning, and I knew she would not give me a truthful answer because she would have gone through the roof at the mere suggestion of me doing something like that. I think I would be okay with it if you assured me that you would not let it affect us, she stated. You know full well that you would have gone ballistic at any mention of such a thing, I sneered. She was taken aback and said, I really didn't expect you to get angry with me. I thought that you would love me enough to let me do something that meant this much. Well, whatever you were smoking is definitely illegal. Did you think I would just tell you it was okay to go screw this guy? I suppose you expect me to sit home and wait for you while you spend the weekend screwing him? I retorted. Maybe I didn't think everything through too well, she said. You think? Yes, I didn't stop to consider a few things, like maybe my feelings if I say no to this. Are you going to go through with it or not? I demanded. I don't know. I didn't really think you would refuse me, she admitted. You didn't really think things through too well. I'll tell you what, give me a few days to think about this. We can sit down Sunday afternoon and discuss this after I have had some time to think about it. You kind of shocked me tonight, I said. I went to our bedroom and began moving my things to the guest room. What are you doing? She asked. I don't really want to sleep in the same bed with you when you are obviously thinking more about someone else than you were about me. I replied as I slammed the door after I was in the guest room. I didn't sleep much, but I did come up with a game plan. I also came to the conclusion that as she went through with this, we were finished. The next day, I left the house at the usual time, but I never spoke a word to Linda. I called work and said that I needed the next two days for personal reasons. Then I went to work. I bought three voice-activated recorders, one for the phone, one for the bedroom, and one for her car. I also found a phone tap recorder to tie into our phones and installed that. The next stop was the cell phone provider. Since my name was on her phone, I had no problem getting a copy of her phone charges. While she was still at work, I checked into her email accounts. She had opened one which I didn't know about, but the password was easy. I found a treasure trove there. At least I found out that she hadn't done him yet. I set it up to forward any emails on that account to me without showing that it was doing it. The last thing for the day was a pair of GPS locators. These were quite small and easy to hide. I was going to put one in her billful because she would surely keep her cash and credit cards with her. The other would go in her car. I had a busy day but had things lined up to be able to know what was going on with her. The only other thing I needed in that respect was to give her cell phone and see what messages might be on there. I hoped to do that in the evening as well as plant the GPS devices. I checked her emails and found that she and Frank Jones had exchanged several emails. Frank Jones was a co-worker and I planned to go on his life like he did on mine. The emails made it plain that the next weekend was a go, regardless of what I said. Friday, I went to a highly recommended divorce lawyer. I told him to begin to set things in motion for a divorce with adultery as the cause. Frank Jones was listed as the man and I wanted to sue him. My lawyer said that would be easy if I had the proof. I showed him all the emails, 
phone records, and told him I would soon have audio tapes as well. He was pleased and said he would begin things immediately. When Linda came home that evening, I ignored her and didn't even speak to her. When she was making supper, I walked out and went to a bar to eat and have a few beers. When I arrived home, she stood up and began to talk to me. I just walked past her, went into the guest room, and slammed the door. The only chance she had of saving our marriage was to cancel her plans with Frank, but I didn't think that was going to happen. I ignored her the rest of the weekend until Sunday afternoon. I told her that it was time to talk, and we took seats in the kitchen. I went first. You might have surmised that I am not at all happy with your request. I have given it a lot of thought and can think of no way that I can be okay with this, I said. I can see that you are very angry. If you had looked at it from my point of view, you might have been a little more receptive, she said. I did try to look at it from your perspective, but I have seen no way any good could come from this. So my answer has to be no, I replied. How could you be so selfish? If you love me, I am the selfish one. It seems to me that your desire for someone else is the most selfish thing I have ever heard, she retorted. What happens if I do this anyway? She asked. There will be some serious consequences for any sex outside of our marriage. We took the same vows ten years ago, and they said that we were to be exclusive, I reminded her. I know that, but this is just something that I have to do, she said. Well, I guess this discussion is over. You really need to think about this, I said as I got up and walked out of the house. I took my laptop to a Wi-Fi spot and began watching their emails. She was very angry and assured him that she was going no matter what. He told her that was good because he had already reserved room 125 at the Hampton Inn, Kansas City for Friday and Saturday nights. I immediately reserved that room for Thursday night. They were making this way too easy. They were also planning a romantic date on Saturday evening. They were going for a nice dinner, some dancing, then hot sex. Linda told him that she bought some sexy new underwear just for their date. I got something to eat while I was watching them correspond. They were past my refusal and onto making plans for their weekend. Check-in time was 3 o'clock, so he was going to pick her up at 1 o'clock since it was a two-hour drive and they could be there as early as possible. I was surprised that he was going to pick her up at the house. I was going to have to see what I wanted to do there. I reserved a room for the weekend also. It was close enough to theirs to pick up all the signals. I got all the things I needed. The next few days, I got a couple of small fiber optic HD video cameras. I planned on mounting them in the room on Thursday so I would be all ready to record their weekend tryst. This would be perfect ammunition to go with my divorce filing. I totally ignored her the entire time, but Wednesday was the day of final reckoning for her. I would give her one last chance. If she chose Frank, we were done. I asked her to sit at the table so we could talk for a minute. She didn't look happy, but she did. I began. Have you given any more thought to this? I asked. I have, and I still want to do it. I am going to tell you one last time to reconsider. Please don't destroy our marriage for this gruesome guy. This is your last chance, and if you go ahead, you will pay a heavy price, I warned her. I'm going with Frank on Friday afternoon, and I will be back Sunday afternoon. I hope we can get past this and go on, she said. So you chose Frank over me. I guess that tells me all that I need to know. I stood up and walked out of the room. When I got into the guest room, I slammed the door as usual. This time, my marriage was done, and somebody was going to pay. Thursday morning, I went to work and explained to my boss that I needed that afternoon and the next day off. He wanted to know what was up, so I told him I was finalizing my plans to divorce Linda. He was saddened but said that he would support me, and I could have whatever time I needed. I drove to Kansas City on Thursday and checked into their room. I got all the devices put in place and checked them all to make sure everything was working fine. I wanted to have all the evidence I needed for the divorce. Then I was going to with them. I used my laptop to make sure that all the cameras worked and were aimed correctly. I sat still long enough for them to shut off, then moved around to make sure they all came. Everything was perfect. Then I walked down the hall, past the room I would use that weekend, to make sure it was in range. Again, it was okay. I drove back home and contemplated the end of my marriage. I had one more stop to make. 
I stopped at a gun store and bought a small K of pepper spray. I was going to use this to mess up their romantic date. When I got home, Linda was standing in the kitchen. She looked at me expectantly, and I just walked past her without a word. I slammed my door again. Linda came into my room and wanted to be friendly. I told her to save it for Frank because I didn't need her mercy. I turned my back on her, and then she left. I slept fitfully that night but had everything in place to end this. Friday morning, I got up and left at the normal time and never said a word to her. I went to the lawyer's office and signed the papers. I told him I would have all the evidence by Monday and asked that she be served at work Monday afternoon. I also requested that they serve papers to Frank at the same time. I was suing him for alienation of affection. I checked Linda's GPS and it appeared she was getting her hair done. I went into the house and opened her suitcase and found her sexy new underwear. They really were quite sexy. Too bad she wasn't doing this for me. I put on rubber gloves and took out the pepper spray. I sprayed the crotch of her panties and the cups of her brow with it, then put them back in the suitcase. This was going to be fun. I went to our bank and closed all our joint accounts and put all the cash in a new account. Then I canceled all the credit cards which had both names on them. After a satisfying warning, I went home to say goodbye to my wife. It was 12.30, so I knew she would be getting ready for her new man. When I entered my house, Linda was not to be seen, so I'd assumed she was upstairs getting ready. I walked up to her room and walked in. She stood there in some sexy underwear I had given her once. She went to cover herself, but I told her not to be stupid as I had seen it before. She looked very good with a new hair though, perfect makeup, and lingerie. I had to have my say. Why you sure look great. Too bad you don't make that much effort for me. You know it's not like that. I just want to make a good impression. As I said, you're much more concerned about what he thinks than you have been about me. I'm sorry. I just wanted to feel sexy today. While you were sexy, you know that I loved you with all my heart. I know you love me. I walked to her and took her left hand in mine. I began slipping her rings off of her. I said I loved you, but you broke my heart. I gave you this ring the day I married you. We said our vows and promised to forsake all others. That meant something to me, obviously not so much for you. I don't want the ring I gave you on your hand when you were stroking another guy's tool. The engagement ring was my mother's, so I will keep that for the same reason. I slipped both rings in my pocket and let her hand go. She looked stunned, but didn't argue with me. I won't be here when he comes, but I don't want him to come into my house. You cannot bring him here. If you do, I will castrate him and fix you so no man will ever look at you again. That's a promise. He cannot come into my house. Do you understand? Yes, I will not let him in. That's good. I will be watching. Why are you being like this? Because the love of my life has just trashed that love. I hope this weekend is worth the consequences. Goodbye, Linda. I turned and walked away from my soon-to-be ex-wife. She was hollering at me as I walked out, but I was done with her. I parked down the street so I could watch. I made sure I was parked where Linda could see me if he went in the house. I was going to jail, but they would be hurting worse. Pretty soon, his car drove up. He walked up to the door and rang the bell. Linda opened the door and came right out with her suitcase in hand. She sat it down and put her arms around his neck before giving him a long, deep kiss. As he picked up her suitcase, she looked my way and gave me a smug grin. She sat right next to him in the car and gave me the smug look again as they drove past me. I flipped her off and the smug look disappeared. I went back to my house and changed all the locks and the garage door code. I grabbed the suitcase I had already packed and drove to Casey. I checked in and went in my room and immediately set up my laptop. The camera pointing to the bottom of the bed showed Linda naked. It was obvious he'd already screwed her. It was also pretty clear that he hadn't lasted too long. He came out of the bathroom. He was naked and I had to laugh. He had a very small tool. Linda was accustomed to much more meat than this little could deliver. About that time, Frank walked to the bed by Linda. He was hard again and ready for another go at her. She smiled at him and opened her arms and laughed. When she reached for his little tool, he didn't have to take it easy because I would be surprised if she could even feel that little thing inside her. Wow, 
Did she make a lousy trade? This guy was pitiful. I could see a bit of frustration on her face as he rested. It did not appear like she was going to be very happy with the results of this weekend. She was going to come home frustrated, then get kicked out on her ass the next day. He was soon ready to go again, and he gave her another less than thrilling four-minute session. He was already done three times, and she wasn't even close. This was going better than I had ever hoped it might. I had to quit watching and went out for supper and a couple drinks. I left everything recording to have all I might need for the lawyer and also to rub her nose in what a loser she had picked. When I returned, he was asleep and she was looking even more frustrated. This really was fun after I got over the pain of losing my wife. I went to bed thinking about how much fun I was going to have with them tomorrow. I thought about some of the hot babes I had seen in the bar and knew I would soon be free to pursue them. I fell asleep with a smile in my heart. There was no more anguish for me as my course was plotted, and I knew where I was going. I awoke refreshed and ready for some fun. I showered then went out for a nice breakfast and picked up some snacks in case I could not get away later. I went back to my room and called the local florist. I ordered a bouquet for Linda. I had always given her one just like this on our anniversary. Since there would not be another anniversary, I wanted her to think about what she was jeopardizing. I asked for it to be delivered at 11 o'clock a.m. I hoped my timing might be good, but it didn't matter. The time was perfect. They got dressed and went out for a while. When they came back, they began making out. They were soon naked, and he had just mounted her when there was a knock at the door. The florist delivered the flowers, and I could see a pensive look on Linda's face before she became angry. She got out of her cell phone and dialed. My cell phone was soon ringing. I answered, and we had a short conversation. Hello, how are you doing? Not worth of my wife is out drooling some other guy while I sit here getting more angry every time I think about it. Why do you ask? It's not like you give a... Well, I just... Just a bouquet of flowers, just like you always get me for our anniversary. I wanted to know what you were doing. I don't know how you could think I did that. First off, you and your rocket scientist boyfriend kept me in the dark about where you were going. Secondly, if I had sent you flowers, that would have been ragwe and the card would have read to my cheating wife. That's not very nice. Right, and you little Frankies, maybe it will give you some idea of what you are throwing away. I saw a very stunned look on her face as I turned my phone off. She was soon dialing again, but of course, there was no answer. She tried a few more times, then gave up. She told him what I had said, and he assured her that I would get over it. That was not going to happen until I was rid of her. She wasn't in the mood for sex, but after a while she began to give in. So I called for a pizza delivery and ordered Linda's favorite pizza. They arrived just as he was mounting her again. He was very angry and didn't want to pay, but the delivery guy verified the room number and his cell phone number. He threatened to call the police, so Frankie gave in and paid. They decided to eat since they had paid for it. After they enjoyed their lunch, they talked for a while, but Frankie was soon after her again. When they started to get hot and heavy, I called the sandwich shop and ordered her favorite sandwich for delivery. He'd been here for about a minute when the sandwich arrived. When Linda looked at the sandwich, she told him that I must have figured out where they were. He couldn't believe it, but she told him about my rocket scientist crack and said that I had probably hacked into her new email where he had mentioned it. It had taken her a while, but she finally figured it out. She told him I was very smart, but have had little problem doing that. They decided to get dressed and go out for a while. She told him when they got back, they would clean up and get dressed for their romantic date. She promised to make it up to him tonight. They left, and I was laughing so hard I had tears streaming down my face. When they returned, they showered and got dressed. Linda put on her very sexy underwear and modeled it for him. He tried to jump her, but she said she wanted to go out on their date. I wondered how long it would take for her surprise to announce itself. She finished dressing and looked very good. I hoped my surprise would work because it was going to be a hoot if it did. They went out, and I sat back to await their return. They returned in about an hour, and Linda stripped as she ran into the bathroom and into the shower. She was in there for a long time, and when she emerged, her tits and crotch were bright red. It looked very painful, and it looked as if little Frankie wasn't getting any tonight. 
Linda was lying on the bed moaning when Frankie tried to fondle her. She went ballistic, telling him she was in pain and not interested right now. She said there must have been something in her new lingerie that she was allergic to. Little did she know. I spent some time organizing all my videos and making DVDs for the lawyer and Frankie's wife. When I had everything ready, I went to bed. My very successful day had me smiling again. It seemed that there was trouble in paradise, and I had caused it. Sunday morning, I got up and headed for home. Linda was going to be in for much more hell when she got home. Then tomorrow, it would all be over. When Frankie dropped her off later that day, he didn't even carry her back to the door. He just let her out. I was sitting on the couch watching a football game and didn't even acknowledge her arrival. She announced that she was home, and I just... So she walked between me and the TV and gave me a sexy smile. I thought you might be happy to see me. You are not dead. What would give that idea? Do I look like I got stupid over the last few days? I know you did, but I didn't. I never thought you were stupid. I did think that you loved me enough to get past this. Well, I loved you with all my heart, but that was in the past. You broke my heart when you went with him, even after I had repeatedly asked you not to. I told you how I felt, and that meant nothing to you. So, as far as I was concerned, once you left with him, I didn't really care if you came back or not. I can't believe that you feel that way about me. Well, believe it because you are big time. I don't know if there is any chance for us going forward. I will do anything to make it up to you. I realize now that I made a huge mistake. Is there anything I can do? You can drop down on your knees and eat my... You know, I can't do that. I know you won't do that. So, I guess that tells me how much your promise to do anything to save our marriage is worth. It's worth about as much as your promise to be faithful when we marry. I was thinking about you all the way home today. I really want to make love to you tonight. I need you. You need me. I don't think so. As far as making love to me tonight, there's not much chance. Did you have little Frankie use a condom every time he, you know? No, he's married, and I can't have children. Do you think you are the only one he's used the routine with? You are now damaged goods as far as I am concerned. There is no way I would. You until you have a clean bill of health from a doctor. Also, I don't do seconds. I know he's clean, but you could use a condom if you don't think so, right? I'm going to use a rubber to my wife after she's some loser bareback all weekend. You chose little Frankie over me. I'm going out for a while. I really can't stomach looking at your cheating ass anymore tonight. You can sleep in the guest room tonight. I like the master bedroom better. And unlike you, I didn't do anything wrong. Can we talk about this? We can talk tomorrow after you get back from work. I really don't know what else there is to discuss. I walked out of the house and walked to a nearby bar and grill to get some supper and clear my head. Actually, my head was clear as I knew exactly what I was doing. I just wanted to get away from her. I don't really drink, so I just ate then went for a long walk. When I got home, she was in my bed. I looked at her and told her to get the out of my bed. This is our bed. I have just as much right to be here as you do. You gave up that right when you, little Frankie. So, you either get out of my bed or I'll drag your sorry ass out of here and toss you in the street. She began crying and slowly left the room. I closed and locked the door behind her. I could hear her still crying as she walked down the hallway. In the morning, I completely ignored her. We each had breakfast and she was leaving at her normal time. She turned and looked at me and told me that she loved me. I gave her a very scornful look and told her that I had loved her too, making sure to emphasize the past tense. I saw tears starting as she turned and walked away. When she was gone, I began packing her things in garbage bags. I packed her stuff until I called Frankie's wife, Linda. I asked her if she knew that her husband spent the weekend with my wife. She thought he had been away on business, so when I offered her copies of my evidence, she was very enthusiastic about the idea. I was stunned when she opened the door. She was absolutely stunning. I was at a loss for words and had to apologize to her. I blamed him on being stunned by her beauty, which of course was the truth. We got down to business, and I explained what had occurred over the weekend. She was furious, and we decided she would accompany me to the lawyer's office and see if he would take her case. He indeed took her case, 
and even gave us a discount. She began filling out the paperwork while I talked to him. I asked him if I needed to wait to serve Frankie to protect Linda. He said as long as she signed the papers beforehand, she would be okay. Linda and I went out for lunch while they got her papers ready. After she signed, I took her home and went home to await Linda's call. I was supposed to call Linda that night to let her know how things went. My phone rang about 3 o'clock. She was not a happy camper. What the hell is this? What the hell is what? I just got divorce papers served on me and Frank got papers about being sued for something. It all sounds pretty self-explanatory to me. I told you there would be consequences for your weekend. Apparently, you didn't believe me. I didn't think you would do this. Maybe you should have listened to me rather than thinking about the... That little Frankie was filling your head with. I don't want to discuss this over the phone. I'll talk to you when you get back to my house. Then I just hung up on her. I took the garbage bags of her things and tossed them into the front yard, then awaited her return. She pulled into the driveway and flew into a rage. I was recording this so I would be able to get a restraining order to keep her away from me. She was screaming incoherently and spit was flying from her mouth as she raged at me. I remained calm and collected that she vented. I finally broke in and began our last conversation. If you want to talk, you need to settle down so we can talk. If not, I will put your things in your car and you can leave. I never thought you would do this to me. Do this to you? You stupid. You did this to me and to us. I told you several times not to do this and even begged you not to destroy our marriage. You chose to destroy our marriage, so why would think I wasn't going to divorce you? You said you loved me. I did. I love you more than anything, and you broke my heart. As a reward, the obvious problem is that you didn't love me or respect me. I can't live with someone who has that low of an opinion of me. But I do love you. If you love me, you would not have gone and drilled little Frankie this weekend. Why do you keep calling him little Frankie? I had video cameras in your room and recorded the entire weekend. It should be obvious why I call him little. The first time I saw his pathetic tool, I laughed until I cried. I wondered if you could even feel it inside you. I noticed that you weren't climaxing like you do when I drill you. We don't drill. We make love. That's the biggest difference. I would agree with you that we truly made love. I would bet that you were going to miss that. Look at the bright side. Now you can anybody you want. You can have a new guy every night. I don't want that. I want you and only you. Let's go in and sit down for a few minutes. I'm sorry for talking so nasty to you but I have a lot of anger right now. But please know I would never do you any physical harm. The same does not hold true for little Frankie. We went in and sat at the kitchen table as we had so many times. It struck me harshly when I realized that this would be the last time we sat together like this. She began this time and I wet myself to keep calm and not speak so badly to her. You wouldn't really hurt Frank, would you? Why not? He destroyed my navely happy marriage. I think you will have to pay even beyond my lawsuit and his divorce. He won't be getting a divorce. His wife understood about what we wanted to do and said that she would allow him to do it. You believe that? That was just a ploy to make me look bad so he could get in your pants. I talked to his wife this morning and shared my evidence with her. He told her he was out of town on business. We are now sharing a lawyer. He even gave us a quantity discount. I wish you had been honest when I asked you what you would do if I wanted to be with another woman. You know you would have gone ballistic. He knew his wife would never go along with that. I don't believe you. He would never do something like that. Even now, you don't want to listen to my word, exactly why you are now getting a divorce. However, I really don't care what you believe. When you call him later, you will find that he also got tossed out on his ear. So, you are really kicking me out? I am. The night you told me about your plan, I went into the guest room to think. I knew within an hour that I would divorce you. I spent Thursday buying the equipment I needed to gather my evidence and to hack into your email account. Friday, I went to the lawyer and began the divorce process. Why didn't you tell me you were going to divorce me? I would have stopped. I don't think you would have. It would just have made you angrier. I explained to you several times how I felt but the decision had to be yours. You had to be the one to stop it, or you would have been mad at me forever. 
I noticed in your emails that what I said meant nothing to you, so I was sure I was doing the right thing. I didn't sign the papers until the next Friday when you were getting ready for your date. I can't believe that I was that stupid. Is there any chance that you could forgive me? I loved you so much that I might have been able to. Last night, I gave you a last chance and you blew it. I think I could possibly forgive you, but I would never trust you. I would be waiting every day for you to tell me you wanted to be with somebody else. I can't live like that. It's better we just finish it right now. She broke down and cried. I went on, unlike you, I have given this a lot of thought, but I always come up with the same answer. I'm going to divorce you, and I'm going to destroy little Frankie like he destroyed my marriage. You can call them before you leave and share a place or whatever. Don't try to use your credit cards. They have all been canceled. I left half the money in our checking account for you, but I took my name off of it. I will split our savings with you. You can keep your car, but you will have to make the payments on it. You can have all of your clothes and personal things. Also, once you find a place to live, you can have as much furniture as you need. The house is mine. If I do sell it, I will split the proceeds with you. This is all spelled out in the divorce papers. If you want to fight it, I will use all the evidence that I have and it will destroy you. I don't want to do that, but I will if I have to. I won't fight it. This is all my fault. I just wish I could take it back. Well, you know the difference between a cheating wife and a light bulb, don't you? No, what is it? You can unscrew a light bulb. She didn't think it was very funny. I told her that it was time for her to go and let her out of my house. I put all her things in the car as she watched and cried. When it was packed, I opened the door for her, then handed her one last thing, her wedding ring, which I had flattened with a hammer. I told her that it was now just scrap gold, which should bring her a good price. I closed her door, then leaned in and kissed her on the forehead. I said my last words to her, goodbye, my love. I turned and walked back to my lonely house. I didn't even watch her drive away. I couldn't have even if I'd wanted to. My eyes were filled with tears and I cried for another hour until I was totally drained. It was time to consider my options. As I saw it, I had three. One, I could crawl inside a bottle and drink myself into a stupor. I barely drank and didn't like the morning after, so that was no good. Two, I could make everyone happy and kill myself. I would not give her the satisfaction of doing that. Three, I could stand up tall, knowing I had done nothing wrong, and move on with my life. One vast improvement would be the absence of Linda. That brought a smile to my face. I stood up straight and still smiling, called Linda's number. We made plans for dinner that evening, and I knew I was on the way to being healed. We might end up being just friends, or maybe I could trade up because the vision of her still lingered in my mind. Second story, badly burned by a woman who was perfect throughout the relationship. I spent a year with my ex and around the five-month mark, she confessed that she had been in a relationship with another man when we began dating. She assured me she no longer loved him, had ended things with him, and felt compelled to be honest with me to avoid hurting me later on. Despite being against cheating, I decided to end the relationship, initially suspecting she might cheat on me too. There was no argument and she respected my decision. We didn't communicate for about two weeks until she started pleading for another chance. She was beautiful, funny, and being with her felt effortless, so I decided to give it another shot. Months later, she mentioned going on a trip to a town where her ex lived, and I suspected she was meeting him. When I confronted her, she got angry, a side of her I had never seen before. We had never argued, and she was someone I envisioned a future with. A few days later, she broke up with me, disappointed by my accusation. I accepted the breakup, initiated no contact, hoping she would cool down. Within a week, she changed her profile picture and header to images of her and her ex. My heart sank when I went online. She made the photos invisible to me, despite being visible to others. I was devastated but refrained from deleting or messaging her. I clung to denial expecting her to explain and apologize. A part of me even wished she'd ask for reconciliation so I could reject her. Another week passed with no contact, and she unfriended and blocked me. Despite her actions, I struggled to let go due to the overwhelmingly positive aspects I knew about her. I found myself fantasizing about getting back together. 
although I understand it's not the right choice. I've never experienced such betrayal, and healing seems elusive. I maintain no contact, hoping she'll unblock me and offer an explanation. I acknowledge the wrongness of my feelings and understand the need to erase her from my memory, yet I can't escape these thoughts. Intuition led me to catch my cheating BL. Long story short, me, F28, and X, M32, had a long-distance relationship after we met online. Early on, he moved abroad because of a new job opportunity, so that's why we became LDR. From the get-go, we were in a serious relationship, and his mother was involved because we talked about marriage. We had our ups and downs during our relationship, but lately downs because I felt he was pulling away and being all hot and cold. During this period, I started to have a bad feeling and my intuition led me to reactivate my dating app, where I found he had updated his profile. Instead of bringing it up, I tried to make us delete our profiles completely from that app as a couple's task activity, but he refused, saying he didn't use it and forgot his password. I proceeded to express my concerns and he went ballistic, angry, and just clicked on me in the phone call, refusing to answer my calls. After a while, he calmed down and we talked a couple of days after that incident. I still had a bad gut feeling and my intuition made me contact a girl who was a common friend on a social media app. She insisted on just being his friend, but after a while, she confessed that he talked to her as if he's single and stated he's single. She also confessed that she told him I had contacted her, and he became angry at me and her, calling me names and saying hurtful things to her about me. The girl told me everything and even shared screenshots and dates. So he has been cheating with her, promising her the same things, and the talk is so similar to how he pursued me, talked about coming to meet the family, and wanted her for marriage. Within a couple of minutes, he called me, sounded suppressed, angry, and irritated, just asked me if I had some time to say, and it went back and forth because I asked him why he's calling and if he wanted to say something. He just stated, I've done crazy, but never said what I did, and just broke up with me, no explaining, nothing, and just short. During our relationship, there was no intentionally hurtful comments or hate from both of us for him to block me after the call instantly. He blocked me on all social media. I'm still in shock but trying to heal. I didn't see this coming, thinking he must be mature because of his age. I guess I dodged a bullet in a person that wasn't ready. I still don't know why he reacted that way. Any thoughts to help me understand? Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe my channel.